Hey, this is Scott, and tonight we're going to be discussing for New Whiskey Wednesday my second whiskey that I prefer during the holidays. Tonight we're going to be discussing one of the oldest distilleries in Scotland and one of their finest products. I think Glen Morangie's Quinta Rubin Port Cask Finish Single Malt Scotch. Stay tuned. Hey, you're tuned into the Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast. Tonight, we are going to be discussing my second uh, of a couple, two, maybe possibly three whiskeys that I prefer during the holiday season. But first, if you go ahead, if you like this content, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Also, subscribe. And when you do subscribe, a little bell icon will pop up next to it. That way, when I do upload these types of videos, You'll be one of the first notified. So, that being said, you are tuned into the Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast, YouTube's primary channel for discussing Washington State-based wines and spirits, but not exclusively. And that whole part of being not exclusively is happening tonight. So, Glen Morangie, I believe, was established in 1843. Uh, they are one of the scotches that I actually... If somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Scott, I want to get into scotch, but I don't want, I uh, hear it's all peated, it's nasty, it tastes like burning tire. Glen Morangie has what's called the Glen Morangie 10 Original. It is a very beautiful space side, very basic space side scotch that I've introduced a lot of people to. It is, it's a very pleasant pour. This is pretty much the same base liquid, except this one here has been finished in ruby port casks. Now, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and read to you what's on the back of the bottle here. This is kind of how the name Quinta Rubin came around. Uh, the Quintas, or wine estates of Portugal, provide the ruby port cask for this velvety textured Glen Morangie. Rubin is the Gaelic for ruby. So, this does come in at a whopping 46 point, uh, 46% alcohol by volume, so basically 92 proof. And it's one of the, uh, something about the scotch, uh, a lot of the scotch like to uh, import into the United States at either 43 or 46%. You will see a few of them at 40%. Um, I actually do kind of shy away from those, but it might just be because my palate's a little bit more accustomed to the higher proof scotches. Now, again, this is a single malt scotch. Glen Morangie probably has older version, older single malts that they've blended into this. When it comes to scotch, the 12 year age statement is the lowest age stated, age stated single malt that's blended into this batch. Okay, so let's go ahead and the color on this is you'll see it does have that ruby look to it. It is not as dark, by the way. You'll notice it is not as dark as the uh, Midwinter's Night's Dram. Uh, don't know if uh, if these are first fill port, port casts or if they're reused, whatnot. By the way, um, and if I haven't said this is 12 years old, this is actually one of the older bottlings. Glen Morangie does now have a 14-year-old port cast finish single malt scotch. Can't wait to get my hands on one of those. I hear it's excellent as well, but there's also very little difference. So I'm not going to go ahead and buy a 14-year-old single malt from Glen Morangie port cast Quinta Rubin until this is almost done. But I will say this, this is one of those scotches that I do like to have in my cabinet, especially during the holidays. Now, right off the bat, I get a very strong potpourri note, a uh, red fruit note. Now there is that maltiness that Glen Morangie, because it is a single malt, it's a very bready, yeasty type of note that sits behind that fruit. The port really does come forward uh, on, the, uh, on the nose on this. There's a little bit of citrus and a jam. A little bit of sweetness as well. There's a, 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 a little bit of a 
smells like a wood, almost a cedar or teak. Very strong bready note, but again, the, the potpourri, the red fruits, it's coming through in the floral notes. Mm, let's go ahead and take a sip. Now this is the first pour from this bottle, so I expect this to pretty much open up the farther down I get past the shoulder. It's gonna oxidize a little bit, and the flavors, well, for me what happens is my palate tends to adjust to a little bit and the flavors tend to mesh a little bit more together. I'm gonna shock my palate there. Mm. That bread sweetness hits right up front, then is immediately followed by that dark, rich plum fruit notes, those dark fruit, stone fruit notes that port really does impart. Let's go ahead and take a sip, uh, a little bit of sip, and this time we're gonna swish it around the mouth a little bit. Mm. Plum pudding. Plum candies. That strong floral potpourri note. The bread note. Mm. It's almost like a, uh, if you've ever had multi meal or cream of wheat, nah, more, more like multi meal, and you've gone ahead and put some honey in it and you've got some strawberries, there's a strawberry note. That's what I'm really getting on this. The oak, there's a little bit of oak bitterness to it, but it's not overwhelming. It just kind of sits there in the background. Mmm. I haven't had this bottle in quite some time. I did finish off the bottle last year for during the holidays, and I bought this one immediately thereafter, and I was planning on opening it uh, through the month of February. Forgot it. Um, so this... It's, it's a pleasant experience to go back to a scotch. Now, Glen Morangy, like I said, it, 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 Open 14 is the one scotch that really got me into scotch. But Glen Morangy is one of those scotches that allowed me to say, hey, there's a lot more to this. And uh, the three core lines for Glen Morangy are Glen Morangy Tenure, the original. Uh, Glen Morangy Quinta Rubin, which is this one here. Then uh, Glen Morangy has a... I can't remember the name of it, but it's a sherry, dry sherry cast finish one. And it's not my favorite. I do like sherry and I do like sherry finished wines, but that one is uh, probably third on my list between the three uh, Glen Morangies. Let's go ahead and take another sip here. Now, this is non chill filters, non, uh, non chill filtered. Okay, let me say here. Uh, distilled and matured in Rawshire. Let's see here. Perfected by the 16th men of Tain. I forgot what that means. But uh, non-chill filter right there. And it is there's that's why I'm getting the oak, oak on it. It's originally matured in bourbon cask, uh, which is where I'm getting the sweetness, and I'm getting a little bit of that oak bitterness. But I don't think they've added any color to it, but they don't say they didn't either. So, But it is non-chill filtered. Now, 46%, by the way, is also the minimum uh, alcohol by volume that they can go down to without having to have it chill filtered and still remain somewhat clear. Well, let's go ahead and take one more sip of this. Mm. This time, I'm getting more of that oak vanilla up front. A little bit of honey, honey mixed in with that malto meal. The fruit is very ever present. It's a little bit longer. The finish, there's no warming Kentucky hug or burn that I'm getting. This is very, they like to say velvety. I like to say that it's very mouth coating. It's very viscous. This is one of those drams that if you like wine, if you like port, style wines, sweet dessert wines. You want to get into scotch, you are going to absolutely love this particular bottle. 
Um, matter of fact, that's one of the things also that if somebody's a wine drinker and you want to introduce them to whiskey, that's why I like these port finished, um, port finished whiskeys because they are they're kind of an easy transition to get people into those those types of drinks. So, and also same thing goes if you have somebody that is a port finished whiskey lover and they want to get into wine, it works both ways and they get to see what the base of those flavors. You know, when they go to a wine, where they go to a sweet dessert wine like a port, um, they get to see what those sweet, where those original sweet notes come from. So that being said, have you had Glen Morangie's Quinta Rubin? Uh, let me know down in the comments section down below. You know, do you think my tasting notes are spot on? Do you think they are way off out in left field somewhere? Please let me know in the comments down below. Also. I am going to be doing my review probably this weekend, shooting my review on my number one Washington State wine. I also may be considering I do have one other whiskey I do like to sip on during the holiday season. Not sure if I'm going to have time though. And to be honest with you, with the holidays upon us, these might be one of the last two or three videos I do before the new year. So that being said, please let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think. As always, Please, please, please drink responsibly and life is too short for either bad wine or bad whiskey. This whiskey, by the way, I'm going to rate this an 88. I know it's below 90, but it's consistent. It's consistently a high 80s. So like I said, life is too short for either bad wine or bad whiskey. Salon. Mmm. It's Christmas. <laughs>